Hey, Jack, thank you so much. Hey, everyone, it's great to be doing a webinar. It's been a while for me. I think the last webinar was on Windows 10. They asked me at CBT Nuggets to make a nugget for you on an ironclad case for A+. What are we talking about here? Well, so many come to us and say, I want to start in IT, but where do I start? And I would really say, that's got to be A+. Plus. Now, some old timers might say, that's ridiculous. A+, plus is about how to build a PC. That used to be the case, I suppose, decades ago. But A+, plus has changed dramatically. And I'm going to show you just how dramatically as we go through this presentation. So, new to IT... And maybe you want to go ahead and focus in networking because you realize it's all about networking today, isn't it? I mean, cloud-based computing requires the network. Your enterprise computing requires the network. Even your home computing today requires the network. So you want to get into networking. Where, where would you go? I suggest A+. Plus. This is the starting point. Then I suggest you move to Network Plus. Then let's say you're going to be in a Cisco and Juniper shop for networking. I mention this because if you take these two vendors, Juniper and Cisco, you're talking about, oh, probably 80 to 90% market share in the networking arena. So we have courses at CBT Nuggets that would educate you in that area. So here's a little sample path that an individual is going down that's new to IT that wants to get into networking. But what if their thing is virtualization? They read an article in the Wall Street Journal that said, if you don't know virtualization in IT today, you're dead in the water. Don't even bother participating. So this person's excited for virtualization. What do they do? They do A+. They do Network Plus. You're seeing a theme here. They do VMware or they do Citrix or they do any of the other virtualization technologies that we teach here at CBT Nuggets. The next person says, uh, yeah, you know, I'm new to IT and my thing is definitely going to be server-based operating systems and the clients that those servers work with. So they start at A+, they go to their network plus, they then do the Windows 10 installation and config, the Windows 10 clients course. There's some Linux desktops in the form of maybe Ubuntu out in their environment. Seeing a theme, where do they begin? It's A plus and network plus in all of these different potential paths. The next person comes along and says, well, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal and it's all about security. Network security and cyber security is by far the area you need to be in in IT today. What do I say to that individual? You start with A+, you move to your network plus, now you move to security plus. If you're a Cisco shop, you do CCNA security. If you're a Palo Alto shop, you do our Palo Alto. Maybe you do Checkpoint if you're a Checkpoint shop. Bottom line, where do we build that foundation? It's A+, it's network plus. Another person reads in the Wall Street Journal that it's all about DevOps and cloud-based computing these days. They start with A+, and Network+, they move to AWS, Docker, Google Cloud, and the many different offerings that we have here in the DevOps arena. I think this might be my last example. I hope so, because I'm actually getting a little fatigued right now. A plus network plus is the start for someone that is interested in voice over IP or collaboration. And then they move to those specialized courses. So you may be asking yourself right now, why is A plus the foundation? Clearly, A plus must be a lot more than just building a PC. And it is. The A plus certification covers the foundation for all of those tracks that I just mentioned. And let me address a question that I get probably more than ever in my social media channels. And that is, you know, Anthony, 
I'm super excited about IT. I can't wait to get in to the IT field, but should I be a network admin? Or should I be a security specialist? Or should I be a voice over IP communication specialist? Or should I specialize in a track I didn't even mention in this webinar, and that's wireless? Or should I go uh, you know, virtualization of server specialization or desktop virtualization? And they're typically asking about the money. They want to make sure that they make great money in this track that they pursue, or they want to make sure they're able to get hired in the track that they pursue. These values right here were some estimates for 2016 for people in these jobs that I'm describing on this slide. As you can see, there is variation. There's variation in demand. There's variation in the price tag associated with certain positions. But notice that it is not dramatic enough to warrant you choosing a path that you dislike. One of the first things I tell everybody when they're asking me this question is, what are you passionate about? Here's the deal. If you're super passionate about network administration, you're going to start maybe at that figure, but you are going to blow through that number as you advance in your career as a network admin. I would hate to see someone begin life as a security specialist and despise what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll get off my soapbox here in a moment. I just wanted to convey to you that it is as much about what you're passionate about as it is demand and price tags that you're going to earn once you go down a specific path in IT. So we come back to the question, how can the A plus possibly be a foundation for all of these different tracks that I've described to you. Well, let's talk about the first exam. That's 220901. By the way, if it's been a long time since you've thought about A+, one of the first big surprises for individuals is that it's no longer one exam. It is two exams that you must pass in order to be an a certified technician from CompTIA. It's a 220901 exam and then a 220902 exam. You must pass both in order to achieve the certification. So in the 220901 exam, which is mainly about hardware, and 902 is mainly about software, but there are definitely exceptions to what I just said. In the 220901, you would be studying storage technologies. Storage is a path that many IT individuals want to go down, and I didn't even bring that up in those initial IT tracks that I was showing you at the start of this webinar. So we learn about SSD, solid state drive technology that's so critical today in A+. We look at a redundant array of independent disks inside of our A+, course. We talk about storage virtualization, one of the coolest technologies ever, where you have drives that are inside your system, or even some of them are inside and some of them are outside, and you go ahead and carve out what appears to be one big storage space for your end users. And you can manipulate things inside here with the virtualized storage, and they will never even know that any of that is going on. So, wow, right off the bat, from an A plus perspective, we see we are not talking about how to put a motherboard in a case, how to connect the hard drive to the motherboard. Not that building a PC isn't a cool thing, it's just A plus simply isn't about that anymore. CompTIA has modified the certification as the IT landscape has changed dramatically. 
And we know virtualization is a key part of that, and that's why virtualization is a recurring theme as we move throughout the A-plus content. How about this in 2.29.01? We attack the transmission control protocol. Thank goodness we attack TCP IP, because if you don't know TCP IP these days and you're in IT, you're in major trouble. You are using it all of the time. TCP IP is the language of love when it comes to machines communicating with other machines, and that's what we love to do. How about blade servers? This is one of the coolest technologies today. What you see here is our incredible artwork by Amber Barker, resident graphics talent here at CBT Nuggets. And what she drew for me here for the A plus course is what's called a chassis. You see this thing? You see these holes right here? This is where this is going to mount into a rack. And this chassis holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blade servers. That's right, eight different blade servers inside this one chassis, and you can see redundant power supplies down here, and this thing is an amazing beast when it comes to hosting servers for a large enterprise. What do we do? We virtualize using something like VMware, the servers that are running on those blades. So let's say we've got a Windows server right here on this blade and that comes under attack, it can migrate down here to this blade. So this is the technology that we are discussing in A+, and once again, you can see we have transcended dramatically how to build a PC. The A+, is remarkable. Something else that we cover in 2.29.01 that you just can't get away from today is Wi-Fi. Of course not. I mean, think about it. Wi-Fi is becoming ubiquitous. When you are at a location and they tell you they don't have Wi-Fi, you typically look at them like they have two heads. You can't even believe it. You don't have Wi-Fi. Are you kidding me? Wi-Fi is, in fact, it's becoming citywide. More and more cities are proliferating Wi-Fi throughout the city because they realize it is what their citizens expect. We are still just discussing the 22901 course, and now I tell you that we do a ton in there about mobile devices. Have you heard about this term? B Y O B. Oh, nope, that's my Super Bowl party. It's B Y O D. It's not bring your own bottle, it's bring your own device. This means that inside corporations today, people are bringing their iPhone or their Android phone or their iPad or their Nexus Android platform, and they are expecting to be able to get work done with these devices that they're bringing into corporations. This adds a tremendous workload and a tremendous area of concern for the modern network administrators. And that's why these mobile devices are a huge part of A plus and a huge part of 220-901. The other area that we focus on in both 220-901 and 220-902 is troubleshooting. You often hear that troubleshooting is an art. Okay. And that's kind of scary to someone just starting out in IT. Because if you're just starting out in IT, you don't have the experience. You don't have necessarily the skill set to engage in troubleshooting, especially if it's an art form. You know, we when we say art form, what we're really talking about there is it's almost like magic. You can troubleshoot almost in a magical way, calling upon all those decades of experience that you have. 
what I do with you in 229.01 is, and 229.02, is I make sure that you understand troubleshooting is an art form, but you also understand that there are some tried and true steps that you can walk through with troubleshooting to make sure that you are doing it as efficiently and effectively as possible, even if you don't have decades of experience. Let me give you a quick example. One of the things that we need to do is called problem isolation. And sometimes we forget to start at that point. So your customer, who is one of your fellow employees maybe, says, my laptop will not turn on. Now, you don't start troubleshooting from that statement, okay? You have to go in and isolate more of what the issue is. For instance, is there ever any text on screen? Are there ever any LEDs, little pretty lights, that come on when you press the power button? Is there any sound coming from the machine whatsoever when you press the power button? Have you ever plugged it in and charged it? You get the idea. Silly little example, but even with something like my laptop won't turn on, there is a problem isolation sequence that we need to go through. And this is just one of the many steps that I'll teach you to make sure that your troubleshooting goes as smoothly as possible. So 220.902 really starts to get software centric, as I alluded to. And a lot of people feel like, oh yeah, it's just going to be all about Windows. Ugh. Well, that's not true. In 220.902, CompTIA recognizes that the Mac OS is popular, and in fact growing in popularity, as is Linux-based desktops. We'll teach you those technologies, and we'll even teach you how to very easily spin up something like Linux in a virtualized environment inside of your Windows environment. So if your company has asked you to, you know, run in a Windows 10 world, but you are starving to learn Linux, it's going to be very easy and very free of charge for you to spin up that Linux desktop and master that operating system as well. Now I put the Windows 10 here uh, logo here as a quick reminder to myself to talk to you about what CompTIA did in their latest A plus when it comes to Windows version. When CompTIA was creating the 22902 course, the operating system that was in use was Windows 8.1. So they were like, gosh, Windows 10 really isn't ready yet. There's only beta copies available. So CompTIA decided to do a super smart thing. They covered the Windows 8.1 functionality that exists inside of Windows 10. So the exam will never really mention Windows 10 for that matter, I don't really think uh, from memory it mentioned Windows 8.1. It just mentions Windows and it makes sure it's features that exist in these latest versions. So a lot of people will say to me, hey, Anthony, what Windows do I need to get to follow along with your A plus course? And the answer is get Windows 8 or Windows 10 and you're all set because they made sure to stick to that core functionality inside of the curriculum. The other thing that we do inside the 220902 course, no surprise, we've already mentioned it as part of your 220901, is we talk virtualization big time. And when someone says they're into virtualization and they're excited by virtualization, what you have to do is you have to find out what aspect of virtualization are they talking about? Remember, these days we virtualize just about everything. We virtualize the network, we could virtualize the software, we could virtualize the operating system, we could virtualize the server OS or the client OS, we virtualize the security equipment, 
We virtualize, I mean, the storage, you name it. So virtualization is an ever-present component today, and we beat that up in the 22902 course. Another buzz term that's popular in information technology today, of course, is cloud. That is another topic that we feature inside of 22902. What is it like to run in the cloud? What are the issues that could occur when you go to a cloud-based infrastructure? Notice, A plus is a beautiful foundation for all of those tracks that we mentioned earlier in this webinar security, security, and more security when it comes to your 22902. We go through securing Windows, we go through securing the Mac, Linux desktops, we go through securing mobile devices. We even cover the most common ways you could be expected to be attacked in a modern environment. Troubleshooting, troubleshooting, and more troubleshooting, environmental controls, and a favorite area of mine, because we can so often overlook this, is how do we properly communicate? How do we properly communicate down to the end user who is annoying you to no end with their questions about things that they should already know sometimes? And how do we communicate to those above us that? might not understand technology. You see, that's our challenge. When we master the a material, we become wicked smart when it comes to all this technology. But unfortunately, the people above us and the people below us in the organization are probably ignorant to the technology. So in 22902, we help you communicate with both of those entities. So A+, plus, I hope I've made an ironclad case for it in this webinar. It is an amazing foundation for whatever path you choose to take in information technology. And why you might want to consider CBT Nuggets for this A+, plus education is manyfold. Let me just quickly mention some of the reasons you might target us for this training. We go micro when it comes to topics. This is an actual nugget out of my A plus course. It's on 32 bit versus 64 bit operating systems. You might see an instructor out there on the internet, <clears throat> YouTube it, and he might do 60 minutes on this topic. Oh my. Do you think that topic warrants 60 minutes? I don't. I think it warrants six minutes, and that is the length of my nugget. And if I speak too slowly for you, you can play me at 2x thanks to the speed controls in our player, and your nugget will be three minutes in length. Another reason I think you'll be encouraged by CBT Nuggets is we really don't allow our students to sleep. Now, in that six-minute nugget on 32-bit versus 64-bit operating systems, I promise you, you're not going to fall asleep. In fact, most students say when they finish that nugget, they can't wait for the next one. We have just added to the a course quiz questions. And this is so cool, I, it's just unbelievable. So here is an actual nugget. It looks like in this nugget, I am teaching display technology, it would appear, in this A plus nugget. And notice what's happened here at the top. This little sliding area came down because at this point in the nugget, there is a great opportunity for the learner to prove they know what they're learning. Notice the question is, which of the following is true about IPS displays? And they can click this answer button to see the A, B, C, D choices and to validate the learning that they're doing inside of the nuggets. 
If they want to skip the question, they can. If they want to make sure this slider bar never comes back, they can. You've got complete control over how this works. And if you were to get the question wrong, you can go right into the nugget, thanks to the software, and get the answer to the question. So quizzing is just such an incredibly exciting feature. I created flashcards for you. No, they're not this. I don't send them out from my home. They're electronic flashcards, and my students are raving about them. So as I was creating the A+, I made these electronic flashcards to help you master the incredible amount of vocabulary that goes with the a courses. We partnered with Transcender to give you incredibly difficult practice exams. I mean, I gotta be honest, if I pass one of these on a and I've taught a for years, I'm probably just barely gonna pass it. These are so ridiculously difficult. And that was done on purpose by Transcender because they want you to get to the actual a exam and feel like it was easy. Transcender also gives you flashcards, so you actually have two piles of flashcards, one from me and one from them. Here's some other various reasons why you might choose the a here. You can make playlists, so you can pull in nuggets from other courses. There's an accountability coach that can check in with you to make sure you're studying. We have an incredible community. You can chat with your peers. You can speed me up, slow me down. You can pop out the player, put it on another window uh, monitor. You have apps on any mobile device now for CBT Nuggets to make it convenient. So I think A plus is your starting point, And I think CBT Nuggets is the company to deliver that training to you. I think the choice is clear. Any questions that you might have for me, I would love to hear them. Just go ahead and chat them in the question and answer console. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bring up, as we sit here and chat, I'm gonna bring up my contact information. I ordered this in basically how active I am in these social channels. So where I am every day is my blog and Twitter where I am just about every day is Facebook, and then from there, LinkedIn, Google+, and of course, the CBT Nugget communities. So if you want to reach out to me via any of these avenues, please feel free. Boy, I've been teaching Nuggets all day, and my voice is going. Let me take a sip of water. And again, don't be shy. Ask your questions. I see one of the questions in the queue says, awesome, thanks, Anthony. Well, that's great. I am so glad that you were attending today, and I'm glad that you took a look at what a is today. And as we've seen, it is a big, big departure from the a of the past, which really was somewhat limited to what makes up a personal computer and how do those components fit together. So we got a great question in from the audience. How frequently do you update your videos? What an awesome question. So when you are watching a CBT Nugget video, you have the ability to rate that video, okay? So you have the ability to go in and give it from one star to five stars. One of the reasons I will go in and update a video is when I see it's poorly rated. And I'll tell you, it's never failed. If I have, let's say I have 60 nuggets inside A+, and one of those nuggets is getting a poor rating, and I consider a poor rating like a three star. That's unacceptable to me. My nuggets better be four star or five star or I'm unhappy. So I go in that list, I see one is three stars, that's unacceptable to me. I'll go in and watch it, and I'll tell you, 99 times out of 100, I will quickly identify what it is students are having an issue with. And that is when I will update 
a video. Another time I'll update a video, of course, is if a student were to report any error whatsoever, no matter how small. Something's misspelled, I update it. I said something technically inaccurate, I update it. I demonstrated something that is now changed, I update it. So you have the security of knowing that the content that you're viewing through CBT Nuggets gets that kind of care. So many training vendors release materials and that's it. There is abs they don't even have a way to change it should they require changing it. So what an awesome question. By the way, there is a third time I update Nuggets and that of course is when the content revs. One of the popular courses, uh, whoa, I can't write on that slide, all right. One of the popular courses at CBT Nuggets is CCNA Data Center. So this is getting your start in Cisco Data Center Technologies. This course, as of the time of my webinar recording here in February 2017, this course just revised. Cisco took it from version one to version six. Yeah, not sure what happened to versions two, three, four, and five, but anyways, it went from version one to version six. So sure enough, we go in and we update these nuggets to reflect the latest, greatest version from Cisco Systems. So what an awesome question. Well, we are out of time and my voice, as you can probably hear, is about shot. So I just want to end by once again thanking you so much for taking time out to attend this webinar on A plus today. If you're watching the recording, I want to thank you as well. And as always, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.